Okay, so we, uh, we've come over to the Sound Devices booth, and uh, you guys, of course, are known for really high-quality audio interfaces. Right. Uh, very well known in the motion picture industry. A lot of that, uh, a lot of the high-end sound guys love the sound devices stuff because it just works well and it sounds great. Sure. And you guys have also moved into the kind of the video recording area. Yeah. And uh, so we're here. We're going to look at the 240 first, the, P the Pix 240, and then go over and take a look at a brand new product that'll be out in the fall, which I think could have some great applications for the church market. And I'm with Paul. He's going to kind of walk us through the uh, the Pix 240 here. Sure. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, so the PIX240 and its sibling, the 220, are camera-mountable uh, video recorders and playback devices. Uh, basically, the difference between the two units is this is HDSDI and HDMI in and out, and this is HDMI in and out only. There are a few other differences too, but I'm going to primarily focus on the 240. Um, so we take in HDSDI streams or HD, uh, HDMI uh, uncompressed streams from a multitude of cameras, virtually any camera, and we record that stream to um, uh, either an SSD drive. So this is an off-the-shelf SSD drive which mounts inside this caddy here. Um, and the caddy also acts as an interface for, to a computer. So it's got a USB 3, FireWire, and eSATA port. So we can record to SSDs. And we can also record to compact flashcards, which fit in the top here. So we take in those streams and we record those signals as either ProRes or DNX HD uh, com uh, compressed signals to QuickTime files, which are very easily imported into pretty much all editing workstations, Avid and Final Cut Pro. And because these are native codecs we're recording to, there's no need to transcode. So it's a very fast ingest process. Um, so. Very high quality video. There's um, also we have very high quality audio because we're we have the audio history. So there are a couple of very high quality mic preamps on the bottom here. They, they use the same quality mic pre's as our seven series high end audio recorders, um, and they can also be configured to be four channels of AES digital. In fact, we can have up to eight channels of audio because we can take eight channels via SDI. Um, Another important feature of this box is it has a built-in timecode reader and generator and it can also act as a Genlock master, which is very important in a multi-cam scenario. You just attach your PIX to each camera, feed the Genlock from the PIX through to each camera's Genlock input, and that will ensure that all the cameras are running at exactly the same frame rate by virtue of the fact that the, the accuracy of the Genlock on these on, on multiple PIX units are very, very tightly tuned and calibrated. Um, we also have, there's a whole range of other features. We have a built-in uh, hardware scaler, which is a really useful feature because you can come in at any rate. I mean, at the moment we're picking up 1080i 594 from this uh, F3 camera, but we can actually convert that to any other HD resolution and rate. Um, we can up-convert, down-convert, and cross-convert. and the intuitive menu system allows you to quickly go to the venue, uh, video menu, uh, select your video input, whether it's HDMI or SDI, and then we can choose here what resolution rate we want to record. So I can take that 1080 i5994 signal and convert it to any of these different resolutions and rates on the fly, no problem. We can even do things like 3 to 2 pull down removal, which is an essential feature these days. Lots of other features in there, but now I want to talk specifically about some of the um, new features we actually just introduced with version 2 firmware. As you can see we've got this wonderful 800 by 480 pixel monitor display and with this very informative OSD on, on the overlay. We can turn off that OSD very simply. This is great because you've got all that information there. We've had many users say this is a great display but we'd like to really be able to use it as a as a true monitor and really a true monitor needs exposure assist and focus assist uh, functions. So we've introduced those, introduced those features in our latest firmware. So I can press uh, a shortcut here and turn on like false color exposure mode. This helps us to, um, as I close and open this aperture on this camera, blue means it's underexposed. Uh, red would mean it's overexposed, but generally you're looking for pinks, greys and greens for, for good exposure on a face. So we have a really useful exposure as assist tool there. We can also do zebra stripes as well, which are a, a common um, technique used for exposure. We also have focus assist features as well. So I can, if I just turn off this OSD, I'm going to 
do one-to-one -one pixel mapping, which means I've zoomed in to the centre portion of that 1920 by 1080 image. So the actual image is about this size, and we've zoomed into the centre. So we can really now check our focus in more detail. I can even scroll to various parts of the image. So for instance, if I want to focus in on this text just here, it's easy to just scan to that, and then I can roll in and roll out until it looks about right. In addition to that, to help with focusing, I can turn on a peaking filter. Okay, so now you can see that all the edges, sharp edges, are highlighted red. So as I focus in and out and roll the focus, so I'm in focus just about there. Okay, so in conjunction with the zoom, it's a very powerful focus assist tool. Um, okay, we've also introduced in this version two firmware. Um, the ability to add cue markers and loop play, which is a really useful facility for quickly marking a point of interest and quickly locating to it. It's very easy to use. You simply go into record and um, on the fly you can press the files button to add cue markers. You can see the little cue markers come up here. And now, want to play back? I just simply press the play button and then I can use the skip controls to quickly jump to cues backwards and forwards, very fast. I can do that from pause as well to queue up. If I want to loop between those queue markers, I can go into loop mode by holding the play button. Now it tells me I'm in loop mode. So now I can quickly press play. Um, I'm going to queue to, say, Q1 here. Now I want to get it to loop between Q1 and the next queue marker. So very simply set up a little region there. Now I can hit play and away you go. I can even play that back in fast forward mode and loop. That way I can slow it down. This is like a shuttle control. Right. Okay. We can even do frame by frame, frame by frame navigation here. Step through. Very useful feature. Um, in terms of working with cameras, we can trigger recording not only for locally from the pics, but we can also trigger via the SDI record start stop flags. We can trigger via time code over SDI. And we can even use LANC as a way to remote control the unit. So there's lots of remote control features in here. Yeah. So that gives you a, a pretty good overview of the PIX portable unit.